we do genetic testing, we're trying to identify if there's a change or something different about a patient's gene that could explain the clinical presentation or the symptoms that we're seeing in that patient. We have thousands and thousands of genes in our body and each gene has its own very specific job and function that it's supposed to do. In order for it to do its job, it has to look a very specific way. When a physician orders genetic testing for a patient, the first thing that the patient will do is meet with a genetic counselor for a pre-test genetic counseling session. The point of that conversation is really to um, gather additional information from the patient about their exact um, clinical history, what they've been experiencing as far as symptoms, document a family history. Um, those things are really important for interpreting the test result. And we also spend time during that first appointment going over some basic information about genetics with the patient and helping them to understand some concepts that will be important once we get a test result back. Saliva sample is primarily the most common method that we use, but other sample types can include blood and other different types of specimen. Um, but most often we do a saliva collection. That can be done either in our office uh, or in some cases we can send a kit directly to the patient's home. So sometimes genetic testing is really the only way that we can put a specific name on a condition, helping to give some guidance for patients on what they may expect based on what the underlying cause of their disease is. And I think what most patients pursue genetic testing for is to know if there are any treatment options that may be available to them. Um, you know, in, in the retinal dystrophy space right now, there's a lot of development and new therapies that are becoming available. Um, some of them are gene specific, and so we have to know um, a patient's underlying genetic cause for their disease before we can assess whether or not that treatment may be a good option for patients. Genetic testing results can kind of fall into three different categories or buckets. It can be positive, which means that we identify a significant genetic change or changes that we think, um, you know, we're confident explain the patient's condition. And in those positive cases is when we can really provide personalized information about their diagnosis, their prognosis, any personalized management recommendations, um, risk assessment for family members who may be interested, and specific treatment options. The other two categories are either a negative result where we don't find any genetic um, changes that may explain the patient's disease or an inconclusive result where we maybe find something that looks a little bit different but we're not sure if it's significant enough yet to know that it explains the patient's condition. UPMC is really making um, strides in bringing these novel therapies directly to patients. So we're able to offer Luxturna therapy, which is the currently the only FDA approved gene therapy in the United States for a specific retinal dystrophy. We also have several clinical trials, and we also have many basic scientists that are working on developing new therapies kind of in the preclinical setting. At UPMC, we really kind of work together and collaborate across all of those three different areas to try and make sure that if there is something out there that can benefit a patient, that they know about it and that they can decide if it's something that they're interested in.